I'm standing in the engine bay of a Lotus Evora, and we're about to explain to you why. If you watched the track test we did with Sasha's 350Z, you'll know that he has a, an electric car planned. We're standing in front of it, but before we talk about the car itself, I wanted maybe you to give us a little bit of information about why a racer, a guy with the world's craziest Z and a drift car would want to do something like this. What was the attraction of this project for you? I guess there's a couple of important points and without being too much of a tree hugger, yeah. um, I do think that, you know, Inevitably, we need to make a change to yeah. uh, stop burning all the gasoline that our planet has. Yeah. And uh, I also think that electric propulsion, just from a standpoint of being like, it's just a simpler, mm -hmm. more cleaner way of, and I feel like had we had electric cars had a hundred years to develop like the gasoline engine has, yeah. they would, there would be no comparison. Yeah. A lot less so, moving parts in there. It should be a very reliable system, shouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, and you know, they're, they're just, uh, I mean, they don't have the passion, obviously, of a gas motor. You're not gonna have right. the sound and the yeah. feeling, but yeah, uh, yeah I think performance-wise, they they'll show soon that they're the, the better. Solution. Yeah, well, those Teslas are pretty amazingly quick already, and we will talk more about Tesla shortly. Sure. But let's talk about the car. You, you teased us with the mention of Lotus in the Z track test video. This is obviously a Lotus Evora. That's maybe, right. Maybe it's not that obvious since it's, it's in pretty a, taken apart, a right? lot of pieces here. Why the Evora? What, what, what led you to this car versus say, you mentioned maybe a Cayman as an option too. Right. So the, the Lotus platform is always based on an aluminum frame and then the body's kind of put on it. Yeah. So that's really attractive from the standpoint of just being able to remove all, everything and be able to access just the frame. Right. Um, and it needs to be mid-engine. Yeah for the uh, drive unit that we're using to fit in cleanly. For sure, that makes sense. Um, a front engine car, just you wouldn't be able to fit it in, in the back. You would need to cut everything apart in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So the Lotus is like the perfect car. It's, you know, lightweight, mm -hmm. great chassis. Yeah. Engine, not so good. So no one's going to miss it. We throw it in the garbage. Yeah, it's a Toyota Camry <laughs> engine. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, just like the car's underperforming from what's potential is. So mm -hmm. it's a great platform to kind of bring up to what it should be. Yeah. And it's still a current car too, yeah, like yeah. they're still selling brand new Avoros. Yeah, I think it's a cool idea too because Tesla makes the Roadster out of the little brother of this chassis. Right. So it's kind so of cool like to see big, like yeah. you're building the big brother of what Tesla might have done had they stayed in the Roadster business. Exactly. And you were saying too that the electronics in this car were much simpler than say a Cayman and that was part of the attraction? Yeah, I mean Lotus being a small company they're not going to have, you know, 30 engineers on staff working on a whole bunch of different modules and right. three different CAN buses, like it's just... You know what it needs to talk to the ABS, mm -hmm. the dash, the ECU. And it's pretty pretty straightforward. Right. So we were able to reverse engineer it um, pretty quickly. Yeah. And for me, that was kind of my first time delving into that sort of thing. So, yeah. I mean, it's pretty well known that the German stuff is the most complicated. Yes. So I they wouldn't do. have wanted to start there. <laughs> they do like their complicated <laughs> stuff. Uh, so maybe we'll just do a quick walk around the car here. Obviously, the front. Do, it's is called it a clamshell. Clam the yes. front clamshell comes clam off. Shell. And you've really just got your radiator up here, your power steering and all that stuff. So unfortunately for us, the front of this car is pretty packed with just stuff. Yeah, it is. The radiator's on a 45 degree angle. Yeah. So that takes up a lot of space, but it gives us really, really good frontal aerodynamics. Yeah. And all of the uh, air that comes into the rad is stuck down the hood, which yes. is really nice. Good for, for downforce too, right? Yeah, exactly. And the actual HVAC module, which most of you will be used to being under your dashboard, yeah. in this car is in front of the firewall. Is that what that is? Okay. So that takes up a bunch of space. Yeah. But up here, we're going to basically need to put the charger, the um, power steering, uh, pump will be electric, okay, and the air conditioning compressor will be electric. So we're gonna stuff all that stuff up front to get the weight distribution as okay as far forward as we can. So there's a bit of a packaging challenge up here. Then. Yeah, it will be actually a little bit tricky. Are you gonna keep HVAC if you can? Yeah, it'll be a full streetcar. So it's gonna have air conditioning, it's gonna have heating, it's gonna have all the bells and whistles that you'd expect in a sports car. Cool. Okay. Sasha's pulled the interior out, and you've already got a Motec dash in there, which is. Huge. How, how big is that thing? Yeah, it's a 12 inch dash. Wow. And what we actually did was we used that dash and the Motec ECU to do all the reverse engineering on the car. Okay. So that was kind of the first step was to, to learn how all the messages we would need to send to keep the ABS and the stability control happy once the ECU was out of the equation. Okay. And anything else going to go on in the interior? Um, we're just going to try and modernize it a little bit. So the steering wheel and the Avora is kind of always 
left a lot to be desired. It's a bit plain Jane, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna try and spruce that up a little bit within the, I mean, we can't change the airbag, so within the right. confines of kind of what we've got, right. we'll make a new trim ring around it and some buttons and dials in there. Not gonna put a huge iPad in the middle of the dash <laughs> like, a, like a Tesla? No, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> no room stay, for that in we'll there. We'll stay pretty true to just the basic sports car, but. For sure. The, uh, the 12 inch dash is um, able to be totally customized. Okay. Um, so we'll have like a full display like you'd see in a Tesla or an Audi cool. with, you know, all sorts of cool Neat stuff in yeah, there. designs and stuff. So it'll, it should look quite nice. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all comes together. And obviously back here is where the biggest job probably is other than the electronics. I mean, is that the biggest challenge you think? The electronics side rather than the, the you know, mounting it up is not that difficult. Yeah, the controls and getting everything to talk. I mean, we're taking parts from OEM other cars yeah. that all have kind of private you know, can um, just uh, information that is not publicly available. Yeah, it's so we down. have to make contacts and talk to people that have done this before and then get all the different things to talk to one another. And right. So yeah, definitely the can and the messaging, that's the biggest challenge. And and all the electrical control. Once it's the rest of it's just putting stuff in place. It's like an engine swap, you know. Do you have kind of a feel for how that's gonna evolve in terms of controlling the 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 electric motor yet, or are you still kind of just learning we, that? We have most of the hurdles Do you? taken care of so far. Wow. Um, and a lot of those hurdles are not hurdles that I've jumped over myself personally. I've just been fortunate enough to find the people that have done it before. Okay. And, um, you know, we're working together to, to get the project. Anybody forward. that you can mention yet, or is that sort of... Uh, the one person that would be worth mentioning is a guy in Switzerland who's just like a genius, probably the smartest guy that I've ever met. Really? And, Smarter than uh, me? A little bit. Come on. Sorry, Dave. All right, I'll take it. And he's, you know, he's even able to produce his own motor controller and wow. build inverters, like just wow. like super, like you know. Tesla he works level at CERN. Stuff. He works at and CERN. I mean, Tesla so. the person, not the car. Yeah. <laughs> he works where? At CERN, the particle collider. Oh wow! Like, Holy cow! That's okay. all you really need to say. Yeah, right? yeah, that's impressive. So yeah, we're just like little tiny fish in yeah. the grand scheme of things, but we're learning a lot, and that's really the important part. So. Cool. So maybe let's go have a look at the, the motor and the battery unit so we can talk about how all that magic is gonna happen. Cool. This big uh, cylinder is your Tesla 80 motor, right? Is that what it's called? It's a Tesla P, or not P, 85, Model S 85, non-performance. Okay, drive 85, unit. right, I keep getting that part wrong. And this came out of a wrecked Tesla, correct? Yep. You just literally went to a wrecker and bought this. On eBay. On eBay, Yeah. amazing. So what is this rated for power-wise? Do you know offhand? The non-performance ones I think were 360 horsepower. 360-ish, 360 okay. And it's interesting to see that the gearbox is sort of integrated into it. It's, you were saying it's a, literally just like a one-speed gearbox. Yeah, so like the, ba the best way to look at this is this is basically the final drive that comes off the transmission of your normal front-wheel drive car. Right. Right, so there's a final drive that drops down to here yeah. and a differential. And you were saying there's like an AC and a DC side? Uh, yeah, so the DC from the battery comes into the inverter. Yeah. And inside of here, there's a number of IGBTs that do switching to convert the DC voltage to AC three phase for the induction motor. So this big motor normally sits in this aluminum frame back here in the Tesla. And one of the challenges Sasha has is to fit that into the Lotus. This is the Lotus's end, rear engine bay, cradle, what, what would you call it? Yeah, it's the frame, frame, the whole rear frame of the Lotus. So this used to, used to hold the engine, the transmission, and it also has the, oh, the suspension uh, wishbone is connected to it. Right, and I can see you've, you've cut some, some away from this structure. Yeah, so this used to all be a frame and it went down here. You can actually, well, we've ground out most of the, the spot welds that were it was left. welded on here, was it? But yeah, this was all braced and so we've cut all this out. Yeah. And now the drive unit can actually fit in here pretty close to where we're gonna put it. Okay. But we need to cut out this cross beam and move it further forward and taking care to still support the forces between the, the lower controller. And that's so you can align the axles that go through these holes in, exactly. in the correct place. Yep. So this can only really go in one position because of the fixed position. That's right. Axles. So I mean, you pretty much put the axle center line where it is, and then you can rotate the motor a little bit. Right. But it still needs to. It's got an oil pickup, so it still needs to be pretty level. So we're, we're looking pretty good. We're going to have the motor basically touching the floor pan of the underbody of the Lotus. So it'll Great. be as low as you can get it. Yeah. It's kind of like a Porsche now because the majority of the weight hangs off the back. Yeah. But it's not very far behind the axle, so it's, it's not that big of a deal. And then ahead of that, the batteries will, will go there. And uh, so just the batteries across the back here. 
Uh, so there'll be some batteries across the back here, and there'll yeah. also be batteries in where the stock fuel tank used to go in the Abora. Fuel tank? I never thought of that. Yeah. Well, speaking of batteries, let's have a look at what you've got for that, because I think it's kind of a cool twist on what people might be expecting. Sure. Being the simple man that I am, I thought, well, if he's using a Tesla motor, I guess he's gonna put Tesla batteries in the Lotus, but that's not the case, is it? No, we're using uh, Chevy Volt batteries, and we're not the first to do this. There's another guy in Ottawa, actually, that has a, uh, <clears throat> one of those Factory 5 kit cars. Yeah, yeah. I think you've seen it before. Yeah, I have, yeah. And it's using two of these Chevy Volt batteries. We're basically doing the same thing. Okay. The Chevy Volt battery, um, it won't have the same capacity as a Tesla battery. Right. But it's a more powerful battery in the sense of um, when it's under a lot of load and there's mm -hmm. a lot of big current draw, yeah. the voltage drop, even with a battery pack that's half the, the size, yeah. will, the voltage drop will not be as big as a Tesla pack. So we'll actually get better performance with two volt batteries or the Tesla drive unit than we would if we had the Tesla battery pack. Really interesting. So you're only gonna use two of these? You're not gonna use all four? When I say two, I'm, I'm talking about two complete oh, wow. batteries that you see here. So this is about 16 kilowatt hours. Okay. And two of them obviously will be 32. So, which is about half of a Tesla 60. Okay, and do you have a sense of what your range might be with that setup? Uh, well, it's tough to estimate, obviously, but uh, we're hoping for 200 kilometers. Oh wow, okay. Right now. That's plenty. Uh, yeah, the, the Chevy Volt is only able to get 46 miles of or so of EV range. Okay. But that's because when Chevy built this car, they only are using about 60% of the battery so that the life of the battery would be very long. Ah, okay. So once we go from full charge to empty, you know, we'll, we'll obviously have a lot more than 46 miles and our car's lighter and more aerodynamic, so. Right, that'll help too. Yeah. And you don't care about murdering these batteries relatively quickly because you well, want to go fast. Well, no, I still want the, <laughs> I, yes and no. I want the system to be, to make sense. I don't want it to be something where you gotta change the batteries every two years. Sure. Um, but I mean, Chevy Volts have been out there for 100,000 miles and have, have seen very little battery degradation. So oh, good. I think they were way too conservative. Yeah. And I think we'll be able to still have really good battery life. Cool. And are these expensive? Or are they hard to source? These guys, you just go on carpart.com and they're, you know, 2,000 bucks. Wow, that's not bad. A comparable brand new lithium ion battery of this capacity would be about 6,000 or 7,000 dollars, so. Wow, that's a good deal then. Yeah, and you get, you know, the, the electronics and like, these are water cooled. Yeah, so I see we'll, that. we'll have, better thermal management than if we were just using cells without any, just air-cooled cells. Yeah. They have built-in battery management systems, so we'll actually be able to communicate with these little modules directly with Amazing. the MoTeC. And when we're fully charged, we'll be able to balance the cells, which basically means make sure they're all the exact same charge, every little individual cell in this pack. Right. And this cover next to you, that's not going to be used, or is it? No, so these little four modules, like you pointed out, they'll all be separated and mounted in different parts of the right. chassis. Um, and then we'll have to make our own covers for um, isolation after. So is the cover for heat? Is that what those are for? The cover is just basically to protect them from the elements and to protect people from getting electrocuted. Right, okay. We don't want to get electrocuted. No, just put your finger here. <laughs> My tongue there and we'll be all, all set. Well, thanks for the rundown on this project. I'm really looking forward to seeing it evolve and uh, I'm looking forward to driving it sometime too because now that he's let me try the Z, he's got to let me try the, the Lotus, right Pete? Well, yeah, we've got uh, quite a few videos and progress to show on this before that's going to be a reality. But that's right, hurry up and build this thing. If we what? know anything, Sasha gets stuff done quick. He does. Do you uh, have sort of like a quick synopsis of what the next steps in the program are? Yeah, so basically where we're sitting right now is to just get the mechanicals taken care of and then by January, February, we're going to wrap it all together. Okay. And we should be ready to go testing in the spring. Wow. There you go, Pete. Well, that's quicker than I thought. Going for a rip in the spring. So stay tuned folks, we'll have lots more electric car project for you. I think it's gonna be really fun and uh, educational to see this thing evolve.